y'all meet it and I'm with Pretty in Paper Crafts and this is Coffee in a Card. I go live every Sunday morning. It looks like we've got some people coming on. Hi Patty and Kim. Good morning. Happy St. Patrick's Day. All right so today I'm using the Home to Roost stamp set and guess what? Yep I'm giving one away. Whoop whoop. This stamp set is so cool. I love this little rooster. He is a lot of fun to create with. I can't wait to show you guys what I've come up with. Very, very fun. So make sure you hit the share button. Share with your personal page. Let's get some crafters over here. My um, group page is over 500, which is fabulous. It grows each day, and that's so sweet. That's so special to me. I love being able to share with um, as so many people. So congratulations, winners. You guys are awesome. Um, and let's, get, let's do some more giveaways. How about it? All right. Before I, um, well, I'm going to turn you down. I'm going to show you my Fable Friends class. It is coming up. The deadline to register is this Friday. There's a couple different options. There's a PDF only option for $15. There's a Pretty Little Stampers team option for my team only. You get that option. You get everything except the product because I want you to order the product under yourself and get the discount. So it's $15 for the team price. You get everything cut and sent to you except the product. Um, it's $30 for the entire class for those that are not on my team. It comes with a package of gingham gala paper. It comes with a spool of the 1 8 inch ribbon and it comes with all six projects. Super, super fun. There we go, that looks great. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. So here's my Fable Friends class, you guys. It's so cute. Again, the deadline to register is this Friday. Uh, you'll have everything you need to make these projects way before Easter. Get everything out to your loved ones. Look at this cute little Easter basket. We've got a little Cadbury egg box. So cute with our little chick on it. We have my um, card that I featured on my blog post. This adorable bunny card. Look at that. We've got our duck with all her little eggs inside a little treat. And we have this fun flip top box, which opens to reveal a can. It's like a fabulous size box here. Look at, I have starburst jelly beans inside. And then we also have this cute Easter flip top that holds these little milk chocolate Hershey bunnies. So, so fun, lots of great projects. And again, it comes with this adorable stamp set, which is so fun to color, you guys. Absolutely love it. Thank you, Rhonda, for sharing my video. Karen, I'm so glad you signed up for my class. You're not gonna be disappointed. I'm really excited for this class. And yes, I have my coffee this morning. I got up a little bit later than normal, so I haven't finished my coffee. Hopefully, you guys have a beverage of choice in your hands and you are enjoying it while you watch. All right, you guys, here is my rewards code for this month. Oh, I wanted to show you, I got these embellishments in. And they're so cool looking. And I thought I would show you in person what they look like. The pictures kind of never really do them justice, but these are so cool. Are these sealed? No, okay. Look at these, and they have adhesive on the back of them. So you don't even have to try and glue them down. They just peel off, the backing peels off, and you can just stick them down. So cool, and they come in silver and gold. And they're quite like, I mean, they're like sturdy, like they're metal. So, so cool. So that is the, oh, look at that kind of warped. That is the um, reward for my, um, for March. So if you place a $50 order with me this month, you get these awesome embellishments for free from me. Not to mention in March, if you place a $50 order, you get a free celebration item like the Home to Roost stamp set. So it's all kinds of free, 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 and $50 in awesome projects or product. And you just use this code to go shopping and use my stamp and reward code when you do that. And voila, free and free and free. Lots of free. I love it. All right, you guys, let's look at the projects for today, shall we? Very, very fun. So you guys saw this one here. This is my simple and very easy. I love that it's kind of masculine. Um, and again, I... I'm going to give you a little backstory. So when I was trying to use this stamp set, I tried to use some of Erica Sirwin's Pink Buckaroos. Hopefully you guys have heard of her. She's my upline. Um, and I used her suggestion where she finds some of her inspiration for cards. And one of the things she said is, um, 
she uses Pinterest in a different way. She doesn't search for like a stamp set. She doesn't search for cards. She searches for other things like cookie decorations, um, you know, things like that. So what I did with the rooster is I searched for things that I have seen roosters. Roosters in home decor, roosters in kitchen decorations, roosters in barnyard, things like that. So there were all kinds of different things that came up. And one of the things that I noticed constantly was that in all of the like kitchen decorations, buffalo check and roosters went together. So I said, well, I'm going to give it a, a little go and did my buffalo check with the rooster and it turned out into this awesome kind of masculine really cute card and it's kind of hard to see but I did use the wood grain textures um designer series paper and I just stamped the rooster so I'm going to show you this card it's so cute so simple and absolutely love it um so that's project number one project number two is definitely kind of a step up in the skill level you um, need a little bit more skill for this card. This is the barn door. Have you guys seen the barn door bundle? I had to dust it off and play with it. I haven't played with it in a long time, but I thought a rooster needs a barn. And so what I did was I really loved this wheat stamp and I wanted to emboss it in gold to make it kind of pop against the barn door. And I embossed the um, cardstock in that striped, um, embossing folder to kind of give that kind of planked barn look and then I love how the door slides so you have this beautiful rooster which I was inspired by a real live rooster in all his beautiful colors so I colored him with blends and then there's this a neat little hidden message when you slide the door so I'm going to show you how to do this card it is so fun it also still opens like a normal card so you can still put something inside so it's very very fun I'm going to show you this one and Last but not least, I wanted to do a sunrise because a rooster needs to make the sun rise, right? A rooster meets the sunrise. So I got out my brush, oh you guys, and I painted this pretty little sunrise here. Our rooster, he's the main feature of this beautiful card. Super, super simple. Can't wait to show you guys. And the sentiment here, enjoy the simple moments like enjoy a sunrise right get your coffee enjoy that beautiful sunrise just like the rooster is and uh yeah we're gonna show you it's gonna be awesome you guys are gonna love this card and it's so simple and of course I'm using that tranquil ribbon tranquil tide ribbon which I'm giving away for free for sharing my project sharing my video today all right you guys so that is the three projects we are going to get started here first one first we're gonna do that buffalo check and I don't know if you guys are aware, but my Buffalo Check stamp, like, forever lives on my Stamparatus. It just never leaves the Stamparatus. And the reason being is because this set, this stamp, is perfect. It fits on a plate just perfectly, and I love that I can re-stamp and re-stamp until I've got the perfect image that I need. So we're going to stamp that and I stamped black on real red. So I'm gonna put a piece of real red. Now, the reason that it's larger than what it needs to be is because I have found that if I wanna hold this paper down and get a real nice good image, um, I need to be able to put magnets on my piece of paper. And when I cut it down to, to be the size that it needs, I can't put a magnet because it's now covering the stamp. So just grabbing a magnet from the back of my Stamparatus. If you guys don't have a Stamparatus, you really need to get one in your life because it is a wonderful lifesaver. And as Janie says, it makes for precision stamping. Um, and the other thing is, is I'm, I'm gonna do spoiler alert. For those of you doing my bingo, um, Stamparatus is going to be one of the grand prizes. Woohoo! so excited, you guys. So one of you is gonna be winning the Stamparatus, which is awesome. All right. So let me get my stays on black ink and we are going to ink up our stamp here and we just really have to kind of work it and get all of this ink pad covered on the stamp on this uh, block so I mean it takes a it takes a little bit I know, Debbie, isn't it so exciting? Yay! It's awesome. When you have enough people playing bingo, you can really um, put 
put in for some awesome prizes. So yeah, the stamp I thought somebody would like that. Okay, so I've got the ink on my stamp and I'm just going to bring it on over and push it down. And I'm just going to rub it because I wanna make sure that the ink transfers really well. And like I said, if we don't have the clearest crispest, crisp, crispest? <laughs> crisp image that we want, um, I know I love the smell of stays on ink. Oh my gosh, Cindy, Cindy, quit distracting me. Um, anyways, if you don't like the stamp image, like looks, you can see that here in the center, it's not very, um, not very well done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink again, just there in the center, because I want it to be a nice crisp image, and we'll just push down kind of in that center where we know. It wasn't quite picking up the ink. Yeah, I like it. So it's kind of, you can just keep doing it as many times as you need. Now, I recommend when using stays on, clean it as soon as you use it because this stays on ink, no joke, will not come off your stamp. And then the other thing that I recommend if you own stays on ink is get the stays on cleaner. And you know what? It took me a long time to get take my own advice and get the stays on cleaner, but I'm so glad that I did. And let me grab it out because stays on. <clears throat> it's so such a strong ink that you just need to. So stays on ink cleaner has kind of the sponge. I just rub it directly onto the stamp and let it sit there for a second and kind of work its magic. And then I use my baby wipe to clean off that ink. So to keep your your ink your stamps clean, you know, make sure you use that stays on cleaner and get that nice and clean. Okay? Rub a dub. That's right. The stamp is getting a bath right now. So, it doesn't do anything. It's like not harmful that it stains the stamps, but nobody likes a stained stamp. You want your stamps nice and clean. So, Anyways, I know I'm having, uh, my video looks really fuzzy. Does my video look fuzzy to anybody else or is it just on my side? Uh, it could be how far away I am too, I'm not sure. Yeah, okay, so Janie's seeing it blurry too. Could be my internet connection, I apologize for that you guys. We might have to uh, put on our bifocals, I'm not sure. All right, so I'm gonna actually cut this down now with my, um, with my, my simply, my, um, what, my trimmer. Golly, I couldn't even, I'm like, why can't I think of the name? So I'm gonna trim this down. Oops, that wasn't far enough. And I want it all the way down into, um, oops. So I'm gonna cut this skinny, the shorter side at four inches. So I'm gonna line this up at four and cut that down, okay? And then I need to trim off this side here. So glad you like your socks, Jamie. Okay, so and then the top here, the long side, we're gonna cut at five and a quarter. And voila, you have this beautiful buffalo check. See how nice it is when you when you stamp it on a piece that's too big and then you can cut it down to size. Um, it actually turns out really, really nice that way. Okay, so we have our buffalo check background, and we're using a basic black. Uh, for our base, I cut this at four and a quarter by 11. We'll just put that down on um, the base of our card. I'm just gonna, while I'm here, just go ahead and glue this. I'm sorry, it's blurry. It keeps going blurry. Maybe I need to zoom it down a little bit. Let's try that. Let's just take a second and slide this down just a little bit and see if that helps. It might not help. It's probably just the internet connection, but We'll try it. All right. So we're going to put this buffalo check down in the back here. Okay, so that's the first step. And then we have two pieces. We have a piece of that wood grain texture that we're gonna stamp the rooster. And we also have a piece of basic black. Now these are going to be 
our next pieces. You guys, I have a confession to make. I am absolutely addicted to the stitch framelit dies. I uh, am not ashamed to admit it. I will use these stitched rectangle, rectangle framelits for the rest of my life. I absolutely love them. And yeah, just, just, just plain addicted. So I don't remember which size I used, so I gotta get my card back out and see. Okay, so for black, I used this size. And for the smaller one, I must use the next size, which I did. All right, so these are going to be our rectangles. And again, I am just addicted, I will admit it. And the best thing, okay, for this, so I'm gonna be using the rooster. And I love these clean stamps. They're so sticky and you can put your images on them without worrying and it's fabulous. Oh, you guys can see I have some stays on on my block. That stays on remover cleans your blocks. So I need to pass that on my, my block later and get that clean. All right, so we've got our stays on ink. And I just wanna stamp the rooster, make sure I get a nice, good, image before I cut it out. So I'm just going to stamp my rooster here. Yeah, Reiner said it could be the holder on the desk. It is better to have it free from your desk, he saw. Oh, uh, yeah, this new stand I have sits on my desk and it does move and kind of jiggle a little bit, which could be causing the camera to jostle. Thank you, Rhinus, for the suggestion. We'll have to figure out something. All right. So again, I'm just gonna get a baby wipe and I'm gonna clean this off. And just clean my rooster. And sometimes the baby wipe is just enough to get it off and you don't need the stays on cleaner. But, all right, so there, and then we're going to get our big shot and we're going to cut out these two shapes, super fast and easy. you guys so here is our cool little image here with our rooster and I have some linen thread so what we'll do is we're gonna glue this to our basic black Barbie and a cold beer absolutely that's what I was thinking Janie, that's what I was thinking, very masculine. All right, so I wrapped this linen thread around my rooster twice and just tied a knot. I don't need that much. Tornado season, I heard tomato season. <laughs> oh, sorry, Janie, it's probably my, my cold and my masculine voice that's happening right now. All right, so I've tied my knot and I'm gonna trim off, just trim down the edges there. And the cool thing about this linen thread is you can untwist it and you like get a frayed edge, it's kind of cool. And I don't know why my knot is being like that. It's kind of being dumb. It's going up and I don't want it to go up but you know, you're not really gonna be the boss of this linen thread, I don't think. All right, so there we go, there's our linen thread. And then we are going to put this up on dimensionals. Connie, good morning, guess what? You won. You won for sharing my video, so you need to message me with what um, tutorial you want. You want the Nine Lives tutorial or the Classic Garage tutorial. Lucky you. Thank you so much for sharing, you guys. You guys are fabulous. All right. So we've got our little rooster. I'm going to put him on crooked because I kind of like crooked. I'm kind of crooked and I like my rooster's crooked there. <laughs> And uh, I know that Jay, or Cindy is laughing at me right now about that, but. All right, 
so we've got our Versa mark and we have this little scrap of paper here. We're gonna stamp the just a note and we're actually going to emboss it. So I notice a lot of people always ask, like what do you use to get the white? Do you use craft white ink or do you use embossing powder or what is it that you use? So uh, there is white ink in the catalog, believe it or not, it, there really is white ink. Um, but I rarely use it because I like the crisp image that I get when I emboss in white. Um, and the white ink isn't as crisp, isn't as clear, but um, the embossing powder does work really, really well. So I use, I tend to use when I need white is either embossing powder or a chalk marker or a gel pen, okay? So those are the things I use. Yep, see, I knew Cindy was gonna be laughing at me. How did I know that? All right, so I'm stamping just a note in um, Versamark ink, and then I'm taking, this is gold for a, a different card, but I'm taking the uh, white embossing powder, and I'm just gonna sprinkle this, ooh. All right, dump, I'm gonna dump this over and get the powder nice and covered on my message, and then, what I like to do, this is why I put this in this little container, is so I can just dump it right back in, and voila. Okay, and I'm gonna put the gold back here because I'm gonna need that in a minute. And cover this up, and then we'll do the heat gun. Okay, so get your heat tool out, and just heat this up real quick. All right, so that is good. And we'll just clean off the stamp. I'm just gonna use the baby wipe since I had it out. Just get that Versamark off. All right, so then I'm gonna actually trim this down. I'm gonna use my trimmer just real fast. Trim this down just a little bit, just a smidgen. And I did stamp a little bit crooked, I see, but. And There we go. So we've got this cut down and we'll just put that on here in the corner and you have yourself a rooster card. It is so cute. So let's see, I'm gonna use a combination because part of it is covering the, um, the rooster image itself, but part of it's hanging off and I want it to kind of all be the same level. So I'm just gonna put some liquid glue and a dimensional and voila, adorable and easy, right? So fun. So there's rooster card number one, you guys. And I love that wood grain. I love the rooster against the wood grain. It's so cool. And this one is a little bit more, you can kind of tell it's wood than this one, but both of them look really neat. All right, so that's card number one. Card number two is our barn door. Very cute. I'm getting blinded by the sun. I gotta close the blinds. There we go. Okay, card number two, barn door. Here's our barn door stamp set. You guys, I accidentally made a mistake and ordered the wood mount for the barn door. So I just didn't mount the barn doors on the wood. So it looks a little bit different. It's in a thicker case, but I didn't, I just put the images directly on the stamp. I did not adhere the stamp to the blocks. Um, so that is kind of what I did to work around when I accidentally ordered a wood one. I could have returned it and got a, got a, a different one, but I just did this instead. So it works. All right. So here's what we need for the card. We need lots of little pieces here. The base of our card is cherry cobbler and you don't need anything for this piece. This piece is just kind of going to be our base at the end. And these pieces we're gonna stamp and cut out. And this is this is our actual do barn door me mechanism here. All right, so. Here's our framelits that come with the barn door. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to emboss the gold. We'll do the embossing first and um, 
and then we'll do some of the stamping and then we'll do the framelit work. So we need the wheat grass and we're going to emboss that here on the two sides, which is gonna be the two sides of our door, which I love the gold. I think it's so cool looking. Um, what did I do with the first? Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, good. Okay, awesome, Karen. I'm glad I could help maybe think of a different way to use it. Hi, Debbie. Thank you for watching. See, Karen, I am the same. Like, I've used the barn door before, but, like, I haven't got it out and used it. And I thought, well, gosh, I can't do a rooster card without a barn. Like, roosters are farm animals, right? All right, so we've got this. Now, I kind of want to have a scrap of paper for this, so I have just a piece of basic black, and that's because I'm going to pour the gold over it and then dump it back in. So let's get our gold out. I stamped it with Versamark. Now let's cover this in gold. Okay, and then we'll put that gold back in here. Okay, so I'm just kind of tapping off the extra. That looks really good. And we're just going to get our gold and dump it back into our container. And I did spill a little bit of gold embossing powder. So what I'm gonna do for that is just take a baby wipe and kind of wipe up the powder. Just clean that off. Okay. All right, so now we'll take the heat gun and we'll heat this tool, or heat this paper. And I love the way that it changes and you know that it's done. So it turns that bright, shiny color. So cool to watch. Very fun. And Karen, yes, I'm working on a media mat. And the reason I'm working on this, this is the Tim Holtz um, glass media mat. I'm working on this because I'm using Brusho today. And Brusho, you need a surface where you can just wipe it off and clean it. So, um, and you could, you could, uh, you know, make a really cool card with the gold with the rooster, even if you didn't have the barn door. But this is just a fun, you know, kind of combining that barn element with the rooster set. All right, so we've done our embossing, which I absolutely love this gold. Is that not the coolest thing, you guys? And um, so we're gonna do some stamping now. We're going to stamp our little note, our little hanging door sign here that says hello. I have that in Night of Navy. So I've got our Night of Navy ink here. We're also gonna stamp the door. This is gray granite, but I wanted to stamp it in Night of Navy to kind of tie in that the blues with the reds. So we're gonna do that. Um, and so we need our hello sign and our door sign. Now, these, these set, this set is an old set and it's not a cling stamp. Um, so what I did, you guys, I never throw away my cling stamp backing. So you can see here's one from my old, this is a new um, cling stamp set that I put together and I kept this backing and I've been using the pieces to stick on my stamps to make them sticky and cling just like my other stamps. So just a quick tip, don't throw away these backings you guys. You can use all this negative space on your existing stamps to make them sticky. Because I like to have the image on my stamp when I'm stamping so I know what it is I need to stamp. Okay, so I've got that, and this one I put a little bit of sticky on too, so it would stick. Okay, so we'll do our Knight of Navy on our little sign. Get that nice and inked up real good, and just stamp that. We have a nice crisp image, I love that. And, oh, Janie, that's so cute. So Janie's saying that the sign framelit that cuts out the sign could also make a cute little handbag. 
because it's doing the handle and the little purse. Okay, so there's our door. Okay, so we've got those stamped and we will clean those off. That's it for the Night of Navy. We'll just clean them off real quick. Not using my squeaky chamois today. Forgot to get it wet before the video. So we're just gonna do with baby wipes today, which is a little bit more messy for my fingers, but that's what happens when I don't plan. Just getting the ink off of there. The Night of Navy ink is really juicy and I noticed that it gets everywhere. <laughs> so usually when I use Night of Navy, I end up with blue fingers. Good thing I like the color blue. Okay, so that is that. So let's go ahead and do the framelit work now, now that we've um, got our images stamped. Here's the deal with the framelit work. So the first thing we're gonna do is um, we're going to cut out our image, and then like I said, I wanted that kind of barn wall look, so I used the striped embossing folder. We're gonna do that second. After we cut out the things we need to cut out, then we'll emboss it. So here's what we need to emboss, or here's what we need to cut. Here we have our frame. This inside piece is our door. And then this is the important mechanism that our door will slide between. Okay, so this is where we're gonna put this, you know, on our page here. And I kind of want the bottom a little bit closer than the top. And the reason for that is because I need space at the top for the bar and the sliding um, wheels, okay? So it's gonna be slightly closer to the bottom. Not too much, it doesn't need that much space, but it's gonna be slightly to the bottom. And then we also have this black piece because we need to actually cut out the mechanism pieces. So we need the bar and we need the rolling um, wheels that go at the top. And we also need a door handle for our door. So those are the things we'll be cutting out of the black. So let me bring my Big Shot in and we'll go ahead and get these cut out. Now my dear friend Kim Bushy, she made Christmas cards um, with the barn door and oh my gosh, you know, there's all these little pieces to it and she was about to lose her mind by the end of it. She started like in July <laughs> and got them all done, which is absolutely amazing. I wish I had it with me. If I thought of it, I would have brought it. I have it hanging up in my office. I have all my cards up on a bulletin board and if I had thought of it, I would have brought it, but she did an amazing job, but she will tell you that <laughs> the, um, the barn door mechanism was a lot. All right, so I've cut out that space. That's what we're gonna need there. Let's go ahead and cut out our barn door. And, oops, sometimes these magnets wanna shift the framelits. The, the wheels look like Pokemon balls. <laughs> hmm, you guys always have these awesome like side ideas. There are a lot of framelits in this set. It's kind of a fun set. It cuts out wreaths, it cuts out flowers, it cuts out all kinds of cool things. I really should get this set out more often to play with. Okay, so there's the door. You want me to go to work and get that card, Janie? If I remember next week, I'll bring it. Unless Kim has a picture of it, then Kim could share it on our page. That'd be awesome. And then we're gonna do the black pieces. These would be tiny little Pokeballs, Mom. These little wheels. So we're gonna cut these out. All right. Let me get these little pieces off of here. Don't wanna lose any of them. And There we go. All right. Okay, so we actually will have to bring the Big Shot back into view, but I wanna put these away real quick because we need to cut our, 
or we need to emboss our um, page now. So we've got our striped embossing. I'm gonna spritz the back of this so it doesn't tear. Just gonna spritz it real quick off camera here. I don't wanna get the media mat wet. But I don't want the um, embossing folder to tear it. So I'm gonna kind of get it a little bit wet so it has a little bit of flexibility. Now, I want my um, lines to be in inverted, not extroverted. <laughs> I think I'm using the right term. So the side that has the logo is gonna be the raised side. So I'm actually flipping so the front is facing the back because I want the back to be the raised side. Okay, I hope that made sense. So I need my other plate. Take off the magnetic plate real quick. Take a sandwich out of this and we'll run this through real quick. I guess I can put this away now. Don't put them down, put them away. Absolutely, Janie. Absolutely, that is my motto. Okay, so I just don't want this to tear. There we go. So see how we have this kind of indented image on the front? That's gonna be kind of our barn wall, if you will. Okay. So here we go, here's all our little pieces. And now we can kind of start putting things together. Um, but before we do, let's go ahead and stamp our rooster and color him. I loved coloring this rooster, he was so cool. Let me bring in my original here. He has all of these colors and believe it or not, if you go find a picture of a rooster, you'll see their feathers have the most amazing colors. So cool and um, so I wanted to kind of paint him as, you know, in real life, they look really bright and vibrant. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stamp him a little bit lower than I did last time. I kind of want him to be a little bit more grounded. So there he is on our piece. Now the measurements for this, I think are three and a half by, so it's three and, no, two and a half by, three and three quarters, two and a half by three and three quarters. And it's gonna fit in that middle section of our barn door. Okay, so the other side has a sentiment and it says, thanks for your friendship, which is another sentiment inside of our Home to Roost stamp set. I love all of the sentiments, missing you, just a note, enjoy the simple moments and thanks for your friendship. They're all fabulous. All right, so I'm gonna stamp this in, in, in in the Memento Black ink. And it's just gonna be over here on this side so that when we slide our barn door, we can see that, that image. All right, so clean off my stamp real quick. I love how easy Memento Black ink wipes off your stamps. That I do love. Okay, now the reason I'm using Memento is because I'm coloring with blends. And these are the blends colors that I chose, okay? I chose Cherry Cobbler, Night, Night of Navy, Cajun Craze, Daffodil Delight, and some bronze for the ground. So let's leave our rooster open here so see if I can, because last time I was looking at a rooster picture, this time I'm going to be looking at my previous picture. So I did Cherry Cobbler around the face, you know, cause he's got his, I am gonna not know the technical terms of this rooster's parts. What is that thing that hangs off the top of their head here? Okay, so I'm just coloring, you know, sections where um, the colors, different colors shine through in the feathers. So we've got a blue chest here and a blue legs down here, maybe some blue down here. And then the tail was blue, it was this magnificent blue. And I love that it's kind of more of a sketched image than it is a solid image. It kind of allows for a little bit of freedom when you're coloring. Um, and so we get some yellows in here. And that's the neat thing about blends is you can blend these colors a little bit. Um, so you can kind of get greens and blues and yellows and oranges and all kinds of fun colors. So just, and it kind of blends like feathers blend, right? 
There's no like abrupt stop in feathers. It just keeps going. All right, so there we go. There's our beautiful rooster. Look how easy that is to color. You just, you're just kind of doing patches of color with him. And then I did the bronze kind of ground here. So I'll bring him up close so you guys can see. There's our finished rooster color. Very fun. All right, now we can assemble. Okay, so let's go ahead and adhere our um, rooster. I'm gonna use tear and tape because I need a strong adhesive because that the um, piece that it's gluing onto is embossed. And when it's embossed, it's not a very flat edge. A comb and a waddle. There we go, Barbara, thank you. <laughs> so the comb and the waddle. I wonder if the waddle's underneath his beak and the comb is the top. That would make sense to me. So I'm just gonna glue this down to the center here. So there he is, there's our rooster. We put him in our barn. Okay, so now the kind of me uh, mechanical pieces. Um, we have our strip here of for the bar up at the top. And I'm just gonna use this kind of scored piece here as my guide. Uh, and you have a couple different th ways you can do this. You can do liquid glue, like Tombow, or you can use fine tip glue. Um, I'm gonna try Tombow, because fine tip glue for me, I feel like is really thin, and it takes a lot of patience to use. And I don't know if you guys know this about me or not, but I'm not the pa most patient person in the world. And so I like my stuff to stick fast. So there's our bar, I just used that guide. Oh, Connie, you have 11 chickens, wish you could send me eggs. Oh, brown, white, green, and blue. Oh my gosh, Connie, that'd be so cool. I didn't know that hens and chickens did colorful eggs. I mean, I know they do brown eggs, but I didn't know they did colorful eggs. All right, so I have already lost one of my pieces, no, oh no. I lost one of my barn doors, so we gotta cut, I'm gonna cut one of those right off camera, just cause it's faster. See, those little pieces are tough to keep track of. It probably fell on the floor. But hey, you know, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen during Facebook Live. And uh, so yeah. Let's talk about chicken eggs while I cut this out real quick. Probably stuck to something or fell off. It's probably sitting in my, my lap. All right, no big deal. We have another one. There we go. Okay, let me put that back. Okay, so for the barn door, let's go ahead and glue our little pieces on. Uh, again, I'm gonna use the Tombow glue because I think I can control it enough not to get it everywhere. But this is the little handle that we're gonna glue to our door. Now, I guess it doesn't matter which direction your door is. You can choose, but you could do your door this way or you could do your door this way. I, I don't know if there's a right or a wrong way, but Now, for the wheels, you want the wheels to be over the door. You want the um, just the just the mechanism, like the, the piece that kind of would be nailed into the door here. That's all you want attached. You want the wheel to be up where it can line up with the bar. Does that make sense? So just right up there, okay? So we'll do the second one here. For any of you like, I hate this rooster set, it's ugly, I'll never do anything with it. And then maybe you saw my projects and thought, oh, maybe I could do something with this. I hope maybe I've changed a mind or two because this really is a very, very cool set to do a lot of cool things with. So I'm just hanging the sign on my door all right, so there we've got our pieces there. Now, we still can't glue this down. This is this is a very kind of um, technical piece. And I, 
there is a piece that has to go behind to sl help slide the door. So here's my um, my instructions. You'll need a piece of Whisper White cardstock that's three and a half by two inches. And I didn't cut that out in ahead of time. So I need to cut a piece that's three and a half by two. And I actually think I have one that will work. Three and a half right here. It's actually a stitch framelit from another project that I didn't use. See, it has a alligator on the back. But this is gonna go behind the door and it's going to stay behind this kind of opening here. And we're gonna put adhesive on it and it's gonna to attach to our door. So we'll put it right there in the center should be good. We just wanna make sure that we have enough room on the top and the bottom. And then what I'm gonna use is our Dun, 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 dun. This is our uh, foam adhesive strips, and we're going to cut this in half. And so you're just going to stick a piece of adhesive right in the middle there and right in the middle here, okay? And that is going to stick through to our barn door. You can see kind of, are you kind of seeing what we're doing here? So we're just gonna stick this barn door down. Like so. And then it will slide. How cool is that? Okay, so then when we glue this down to our card, we also need it up on dimensionals because the, the um, slider needs some space. So let's take a foam strip here. Oops. Two teenage daughters equals patience. Oh yeah, no kidding. I officially have two teenage daughters. My youngest turned 13 on Friday. I feel kind of bad because we were all sick <laughs> and not feeling well, but I think we, we attempted to make her day special. We're gonna take her shopping for her birthday when all of us are well <laughs> and um, take her out to dinner. But I made curry, which she loves, and we did ice cream cake. And she got to open presents from family, so that was nice. Okay, so now I've got two adhesive strips on the side. You can see we've got our kind of mechanism here, a little alligator in the back. And we're just going to center this on our card base and glue this down. Yes, and you can use washers. I've seen people use pennies, um, but I like using the foam adhesive strips. I feel like it's sturdy and look at that. I mean, you have this great mechanism uh, for sliding the door. So very, very fun. Look at that. We finished project number two, you guys. We did it. So cute. Yes, Morgan wants to go clothes shopping. She's kind of at that stage where, you know, she's gotta have the cool brands. I remember those stages. I was, um, I, I warned her that, yes, we can buy those cool brands, but you're not gonna get as much for your money because they're very expensive, but she's fine with that. So there you go. Project number two is done. And now we're on to my favorite part, which is playing with brush -o, you guys. I love brush -o. I hope that I've converted some of you to use Brusho and love Brusho. Um, and what I have come to, to learn and what I tend to do now is when I'm using Brusho, um, I actually like to use the shimmery white in, um, cardstock instead of the watercolor cardstock. So um, the shimmery white does really well with the water and it leaves kind of a shimmery shine. It's really pretty. Um, so that is what I'm actually gonna be using today. Here we go, we've got our paper towels and we're gonna need two tools. We're gonna need our aqua painter and our stamp and spritzer. 
And we have our Brusho Crystal Colors. Brusho comes in five colors. We have Brilliant Red, Gamboge, Yellow, Pr Prussian Blue, and Moss Green. So we're gonna actually use all of the colors today. First thing we need to do is stamp before we color, okay? So we're gonna stamp our rooster in Stazon because we don't want the image to blend. We don't want it to run, and Stazon does not run as long as it's completely dry. So we'll stamp our rooster. I'm gonna stamp him kind of down a little bit in the center of the page, making sure I have a nice crisp image. We will also stamp the grass, the wheat grass. Oh, so okay, so Kim did have a picture of her beautiful card. So thank you, Kim, for posting it. Um, and she posted it on our page, so we can take a look at that. So I'm just stamping the grass along the bottom around our rooster. You could actually fill it in a little bit more if you wanted around him. Um, it can be as full or as little as you like, okay? So we've got those two. And then we need to stamp our sentiment, which is the enjoy the simple moments, which I think is great for a sunset. And I'm running out of blocks here. So here we go, we'll do that sideways. And then we need to clean our stamps because remember we're using stays on and we don't want our stamps to be stained. So, Enjoy the simple moments. Okay, now let's get this cleaned off. I did stays on, so I got some on our mat there. That came right off, so that's good. And that gives our image a moment to dry. We definitely want it to dry. Hi, Lisa, you're just in time to play with some brush -o. Oh, it wasn't it beautiful, Barbara? It is really amazing. Such a ton of work. She did a great job. It was a huge accomplishment. How many did you make, Kim? I can't remember what you told me, how many you made. All right, so just wanna make sure this is good and dry. And we're gonna put some paper towels below us. And we need to get our paper wet. That's why we have our spritzer. And we're just going to spray water. This is just water. Okay, so now that we've got water on it, we are going to take the colors and kind of lay them down. So moss green for the grass. And I'm just shaking it because I have one hole punched into the lid. Just one tiny hole is all you need. And then I wanted to do yellow because, you know, the sun is rising, so that's gonna be kind of right at the bottom near the grass, okay? And then we've got a little bit of orange, kind of the next color, right, as it mixes with the reds and blues, so orange. And then red, not a lot of red. Red's a really bright color. And then blue at the top, because, you know, it was night, and now it's becoming day. All right, so now that we've got the color on there, we can add a little bit more water to kind of activate the colors. Now, every time you do this, it's going to be slightly different. Every time I've done it, it is a little bit different. But you can see how the colors kind of transition down and you've got all, you know, kind of your the, sun, the sunrise, right? So I'm gonna tab. And you can see it's a lot darker, so don't be scared. It is a lot darker before you dab off the extra, okay? So you can continue adding different color if you feel like it needs more red, if you feel like it needs more yellow, maybe some more green down here. You can continue adding and let the paper curl. It's okay if the paper curls. I'm gonna add a little bit more green. Uh, maybe a little bit more orange. I see a lot of yellow, but not a lot of orange. And then red. 
in blue. So we're gonna do a second round of this, okay? Activate the, we'll activate the crystals. There's some green, there's some yellow, there's some more orange. Okay. I did not mask the rooster. Nope, he is right in it. He's getting the color just as well. Okay, all right, and so then, by the magic of YouTube, or Facebook, it's dry. Voila, you have your rooster. Okay, but we're not done yet. We actually are going to then take our aqua painter and we are going to paint our rooster. So you can see here my rooster has some color in him. So we're actually going to paint with the brush out. So we're gonna get some red. Just, this is why I'm using a media mat. Just tapping out some color, some orange, some blue. And we're gonna take our aqua painter and we're actually gonna dip into the color and we're going to paint our rooster. So you can see here I'm making kind of a little palette of watercolor and I'm just going to paint. So there's our rooster. And if you let your watercolors dry in between, I need to grab a piece so I can clean my brush. And you can do layers of color. So you can see here I'm doing the blue is very dark. I need more water. More water, less color. So the blue is very dark. Okay. Let's do some orange. And you can dab off some of that color. It will turn lighter, see? And then we'll do some orange. Look at that. Now you've got this beautiful rooster And he's crowing in the morning. We'll mix some of this, get this a little bit more orange. And there you go. Now you have this adorable rooster and he's got his sentiment and the grass and you've got a sunrise. And like I said, each one is gonna be a little bit different, right? It's never really gonna always be the same. So this one has a lot more reds and blues in it. This one's got a lot more kind of oranges. Um, the nice thing about the media mat is I can then just take my baby wipe, my paper towel, and just wipe off all that extra watercolor, throw that away, mess free. Okay. And then we just get to make an absolutely adorable card. And that's really all there is to it. Let me, I forgot to cut a piece of Tranquil Tide. So Tranquil Tide is the color I'm using today. I have a piece of Trinkle Tide here for the base. Just wanna make sure this is the size we need. So it's a little bit too big, so I'm just gonna cut it off here at five and a half. I'm giving my rooster a chance to dry too a little bit and then score it at four and a quarter. Let's do this here. Didn't have any room over there. Four and a quarter. Make our card base here. Do you, any of you use this edge here to push your sides down, make sure they're nice and even and then fold? I always do that. I saw that somewhere and it was a trick that I learned. All right, so just wanna make sure my rooster's dry. This is the ribbon that you could win when you enter my raffle. This is the Tranquil Tide Ruffled Ribbon. I'm just going to wrap this around my grass and tie a little knot. And I just wanna make sure my ribbon is nice and flat. And it's not going to behave today. Oh gosh. Okay, good enough, I guess. All right, and then we'll cut that down. Where, am I? Where are my ribbon scissors? Don't know. 
Okay, so then you've got your ribbon. And then because I use Brusho, because it, you can tell it warps the paper, I always like to use tear and tape um, to glue it down because it just holds things down really, really well. So this is a, a set that surprised me. I didn't think I was going to like it as much as I do. Um, I think that it's um, fun because it can be a challenge. But also, if you noticed how simple this, the stamping was, um, it made three amazing cards and it was just a rooster stamp. You know what I mean? So like, it doesn't take a lot. It's not super fancy, but it's really, really a cool set. Uh, it makes for some great cards. So then you just glue this down and you have this beautiful card. I definitely need to tie that tighter, but very, very cool, right? Look at that, you guys. So just some fun projects that we did today. Um, you know, you got your rooster in the barn. You got your rooster you know, your manly rooster, and you've got your beautiful kind of artistic sunrise rooster. I hope you guys enjoyed the projects today. Remember that you can get these three projects from me, all the pieces, parts, um, mailed directly to you with a $30 purchase on my online store. Make sure you use this code. Um, so, and then if you up it to $50, you'll get my make and takes, you'll get my free candle embellishments, and you'll get a free celebration item, which could be the Home to Roost stamp set. Yay, I see lots of hearts. I'm so glad you guys like them. They do look very country, huh, Karen? All of them kind of have a country feel to them. You guys, thank you so much for joining me every Sunday. I love getting to craft with you, and thank you again. We will see you next Sunday for more fun, and have a happy St. Patrick's Day. Oh, yay, Tammy, I changed her mind. Okay, one down, woohoo! <laughs> Thank you guys for sharing and have a fabulous week. Happy crafting, bye-bye.